Where is he, Burner? He's in a small southeastern American town. And you activate his communicator? He's overridden its system, Sir E. Who's he chasing? He's after the director of... that. Tomahori? Can you bring White back to base? He got rid of his tracing chip. I guess he didn't want us to find him during this vendetta. Switch to wide range transport! <sighs> it's over, Tamahari. Who are you? White. Gene White. I'm from CI6. Is this another- is this about dying another day? Uh -uh. It's not CI6 arresting you. This is my own vendetta. No, please. We have him, sir. Energize. E. E? What were you thinking? CI-6 does not kill men. We do not carry out punishment. The Razis do that. Die Another Day was an awful film, and Temahori had to suffer. Film was panned. Isn't that enough? No! As punishment for your crimes, you must review every Star Trek film. Why Trek? Eh, the Bond films would take too long to review, so Star Trek it is. You are dismissed. Hello there. The name's White. Gene White. And welcome to the Unclassified Adventures of 0014. I'm Agent 0014 of Critic Intelligence Film Division. So, I've been assigned to review every single film in the Star Trek franchise. Star Trek is one of my favorite franchises of all time, as well as one of the most beloved franchises of all time. It's wonderful characters, great ideas, nerds have attracted millions since the original series first aired in 1966. The original TV show spawned a successful series of films, but the first film in the beloved franchise was, well, very much subpar. Before it was released, a TV series called Star Trek Phase 2 was planned, but it was cancelled. They decided to use an idea up from it to make a movie. Star Trek creator Gene Roddenberry was originally going to direct the film, but instead they had other writers. However, he did not like what they had wrote, so he rewrote their scripts and sent them to Paramount under their... Robert Wise, one of the greatest directors of all time, was hired to direct the film. Unfortunately, he was given nothing to work with. When they'd started filming, the script had not yet finished, and it was rewritten as they filmed it. The actors had no idea what, mo what the movie they were making. And that made Star Trek Motion Picture. Surprisingly, it's not as bad as it could have been, considerably, considering these horrible, these, this horrible situation they had. But still, it was not a good movie. So, let's just dive into Star Trek the Motion Picture. The movie centers around the crew of the Enterprise as they are sent to intercept an entity that is in a collision course with Earth. They manage to find it and enter it. There they find it is a machine that overhears has gained consciousness and that it wishes, wishes to find its human creator. That's a good idea, isn't it? And it is kind of thought-provoking. But this film is unbelievably slow. It's just based around one idea, no characters, no story, and the idea isn't really introduced until the last few minutes. The movie is way too long. Many scenes are dragged out just for the sake of length. The, the movie just feels too, too much like it's trying to copy 2001 A Space Odyssey, but 2001 A Space Odyssey is visual poetry. This is just boring! 
There's scenes that just consist of several similar shots with nothing happening that go on for several minutes. There's a scene at the beginning where Kirk and Scotty fly around the Enterprise for over five minutes. It's boring. It's this Star Trek is not 2001: A Space Odyssey. What worked in 2001: A Space Odyssey does not work in Star Trek. But maybe the characters made made the movie work a little, despite what they despite what the cast was given and what the characters were given to do. The key to Star Trek is its characters. We get the, all the original cast back, but unfortunately they are given nothing to do at all. Everybody is just there, as this cast had no idea what they were doing. They were obviously confused and bored and not very interested. Star Trek is supposed to be exciting, but there's nothing exciting going on here. And there's no comedy, no drama. There is no humanity in this film. But then, but actually, there are some good things about the film. The effects are pretty neat, and I especially like the new warp speed effect. The best aspect of the film is the Star Trek theme that was composed by Jerry Goldsmith. It is one of the best pieces of music ever made. Just absolutely amazing, exciting, it's Star Trek. It was later used as the theme for Star Trek The Next Generation, and is the only really good thing about this movie. But outside of the, the visuals and the music, there is nothing to this film. Those aspects save it just a little, but the movie is still a mess. Not worth watching. Mediocre. Skip it. But at least it did start up the Star Trek franchise, the Star Trek film franchise. And that set them up for some great films. So join me next time as I take a look at Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan.